What's the biggest lie you've fallen for? That's a good question. I think it depends. Sometimes people say things that they might mean so at the moment. But it's always our own expectations that'll disappoint us. Expectations that the other isn't responsible for. Things can change, opinions can change, everything changes in a matter of time. So know your own truth and worth so lies won't be too hard to handle no more. There'll be always disappointments and it's heartbreaking sometimes. That we all need to understand and learn that we can't depend on others. It'll be okay at the end. You'll be okay. I'm going to be okay. That sex was the best thing in the world. Clearly I agreed with it. That my first partner didn't as much. And in hindsight I definitely stressed her out with it. It was all consensual. But now I realise that relationships are about companionship and devotion. Not as much about all the new stuff. I've moved on. I don't miss her. But I do feel guilt. And hopefully she's finding someone who knows how to navigate a relationship better than I did. That relationship needed to end for me to be a better me. The lie most people in the world have fallen for either don't know it or won't admit it. So I'll tell you for them. It's don't worrying I'm on the pill or don't worrying it's my safe time. I've never done it but I know countless sperm stealing women. I think there is also a statistic. Something like one in ten men are fathering someone else's child. Don't remember where I heard that sorry. But yeah bows never believe a girl who says you'll be fine without a condom. Yes you can transfer these credits and we will help fast track your degree admissions person. I gave up a good job a solid living situation, a three-year relationship, to move 200 miles to go to college only to be told I would need to take three years of classes instead of just one semester. It began a three-year depression and me having to rebuild my life again for the second time in my life. I also am still paying off that college debt. Don't any of you laugh okay? I used to be super naive and years ago, I was walking around with a fat stack of cash in my hand. A scruffy man from afar saw me and approached me asking if he could hold it. Sure, I said, not seeing the problem with a complete stranger holding my money. So I placed the money in the palm of his hands. Then he said I'll be right back dot dot dot. Guess what dot dot dot. He never came back dot 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 dot. I know you're laughing, stop. When I was 16 I was fucking in the woods with my girlfriend and she said she was on birth control and I didn't have to use a condom. She was a schizophrenic but nice girl. I proceeded but the whole time I thought what if she's not on birth control and she was trying to trick me into having a baby. I couldn't get a boner because of the thought and it probably saved my life in the long run. I still have some trauma about it I haven't unloaded. Colin Powell told the word that Iraq had WNDs and the whole world believed him, including me. Congress gave Bush W a war authorization and away they went. I'm not sure if he told that lie or if he was a vessel for Rumsfeld and Cheney's lie. Either way, same result. 300k people lost their lives in Iraq from the invasion and the civil war there in the following decade. That lie caused the world a lot of people. Do well in school and you'll do well in life. Education is the big lie for me. Nothing more than a metrics-driven business. I work my way up the ladder. In a field completely different to my degree. And I'm working alongside with some super dumb smart people who didn't graduate from college. Or work there since they got out of high school. I don't resent them for making the same or more than I do. One time my crush's friend heard me say I thought he was cute. Him? And has known this for a while. Hayes never had live experience and isn't into that so L to me. But anyways. All my friends were calling him ugly. And I was saying Hayes not ugly, Hayes cute. Very handsome. And his friend heard me say that and I told him it'd give him five dollars if he kept quiet. And he agreed. He still told him. I can't think of any I've fallen for, but me and a couple of buddies convinced our wives that one of our other buddies had a chronic masturbating problem. That's why his shits always took so long, and when we would go to the pool he would stay in the sauna by himself after we would get out. They believed it for a couple years till one day they brought it up to him at a party. When I was a kid my mum told me that when it was raining outside, 
and the sun was out that meant the devil was beating his wife. Of course I don't believe that now, but I always think of that when it's raining and the sun is out. My mom is a good mom, and that's really the only WTF mom thing I can clearly remember. But goddamn that's a heavy thing to drop on a five-year-old. Our cards and I had some good cards for that time. And it's very rare to find Juju cards where I'm from, especially at that time. I still think about it to this day. I was so gullible and very trusting. We can't afford to both go to school. Let me finish my PhD first, and then you can finish your BA. He with me, kicked me out of our apartment, then dedicated his doctoral defense to and married a professor on the other side of the country because he couldn't be with someone that was not in academia. That I need a car for absolutely everything even for very short trips less than a mile. That if I get hit by a car it's mostly always my fault hence non-car road users have to keep compensating for the shortcomings of car drivers' negligence. That a car is the epitome of freedom after extortionate prices of ownership, gas, insurance, etc. Of course, first time in Manhattan. I'm all starry eyes. This is back in winter of 2014. Anyways, I'm walking around Times Square and the guy was selling last-minute tickets to Louis C.K. in the nearby comedy club. I was like, wow, what a deal, Louis C.K. for 20 bucks. Turns out that Louis C.K. doesn't perform at a run-down comedy club at 10 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Your father is a crazy dangerous man. He will kill you. Every family member, including his super-religious mother who removed him from the family after a psychotic break in which his whole family didn't help or support him. He died homeless on the street because of his mother's stupid religion, and I never ever had a chance to have a father of all. In a world where time and distance seek to part us, know that my love for you remains steadfast and unwavering. In this fleeting existence, one thing remains constant, my devotion to you. Forever and always, I will only love you. She did not in fact only love me. She moved across the country and had a relationship with my cousin. Round the earth. Obviously now it's easy to see every single person on the plane that had a nefarious ulterior motive except me and as many guys fit into the martial art convention space once yearly. We always laugh about how dumb we used to be and feel sorry for the seven billion sheeple just sitting on a disc being oblivious. When I was a child I was forced to work on my dad's roadside service changing tyres. I always hated it. He would always lie to me and tell me we were going to McDonald's and I'd fall for it each time. Just got put to work and never got McDonald's. Also this was around when I was 5 to 12, so I felt betrayed each time. A couple of years ago, I dated a girl who supposedly had a fetish. She asked to pee on me during sex. I really didn't want to, but I loved her so much that I agreed every time. But one day during a quarrel I found out the truth. She did it because I was disgusting to her and she wanted to humiliate me like that. A co-worker and friend convinced me and a group of friends he was fighting cancer. Went on for months of us being supportive and doing group activities together while he gave stories of horrible symptoms and chemo. Not technically diagnosed by anyone but basically Munchausen syndrome. That a seven-foot-tall rabbit would break into my house during the first Sunday after the Paschal full moon and leave eggs everywhere. We'd go to the mall to see the Easter bunny and my mum would be all that's who leaves the eggs in our house scared me so much tbh. Mormonism, I believed it to the point I was willing to die for it. Based all of my major life decisions on it. Paid to be a salesman for Mormonism for two years. Countless hours and wasted dollars. It's all a lie. Easily proven a lie by their own publications. Don't remember the biggest lie, but my dad has a bald spot and when I was a kid he told me and my siblings that he caught it from going to bed while chewing gum and they had to cut it out the next day. You bet your ass none of us ever went to bed with gum after that. Longest lie I've believed. 21 years of believing God was real. That's a long time to believe a being that I can't see or hear or interact with in any way is expecting me to thank him for everything every day. It's like a kid who never stops believing in Santa. 
that a fat guy in a red suit travelled the entire world in one night in a sleigh pulled by magic flying reindeer delivering presents to all the good kids. But only the good kids. Bad kids can get bent. And he knows who is who because he's always watching. I was 18 and some hot slightly older woman wanted to get in touch. Turned out to be some basement troll doing this to a bunch of guys. Reflecting on this now. It really took me too long to see through the bullshit. I can't remember if it was on ICQ or MSN. You should totally do this midlife career change. You'll be getting job offers on LinkedIn for six-figure jobs within six months guaranteed. Nine months later. Still make half of what I was before. Now enrolled in an MBA to try to help. Ain't no lies. I just pretend I don't. But ain't no instant when people lie. Can't recall a big one. I don't fall for them. I just see how far people are willing to go. Don't really do much either. I only lose respect, love, trust to them. I voted for Biden who was going to fix things for the common man. Instead we got skyrocketing prices. Five dollars gas. To wars we are financing. Disastrous pull out in Afghanistan and weakness on the world stage by a doddering old man. Told me that in GTA Vice City, there is a secret code for winter to appear. And I even wrote it on a piece of paper. And for a long time I thought that I was simply entering the cheat code incorrectly.